I think by the end of these month, this month, we will know these players so well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like this on the screen, though. It's very good, isn't it? It's like yeah. first points of reference. It's nice. So the teams enter the field here at the Stade de l'Ort. Phil Mack leading Canada out. Davis Chenge leading Kenya out. Well, I'm delighted to be joined here today up in the commentary box by Rob Vickerman, former England Sevens captain and English Premiership centre. Rob, uh, what are you expecting from the sides today? Well, I think just what you've touched on there, Jack, really interesting point. You've got dynamism and excitement from the Kenyans with the seven players they've brought in, really are spectacular athletes. Not necessarily sure how they're going to fare in a 15s game, but certainly the experience will tell from Canada. Expect to see kick, tactical kicking, lots of structured play from the Canadians trying to offset the athleticism that's going to be against them. So both sides lining up for the national anthems. As the referees joined them before. Sorry.
Well, amongst many talking points in this matchup are two, one at the very top. The fact that Kenya have never qualified for a Rugby World Cup and the fact that Canada have never not. That's what's at stake for both sides. Our officials in the middle, Wayne Barnes, JP Doyle and Joy Neville are the assistant referees and our TMO is Ollie Hodges. Well, Rob, with a gruelling uh, lead up to this repechage, particularly for Kenya, um, Canada as well, confidence a little bit low in the camp. Since the last Rugby World Cup, they've played 30. They've only won eight of them. The mentality of these both two sides is quite contrasting coming into it. Absolutely that. And Canada know they're facing a, Ken a Kenyan team that have just got nothing to lose. They're going to really fly into this game. They're not massively versed with 15s. Ian Snook, the head coach, has said they come into this undercooked slightly with a couple of games more needed, and that makes them very, very dangerous. The Canadians are going to call on that experience. They'll control the pace and tempo of this game, absolutely, and they'll need to, because given any degree of slack, this Kenyan team could well run wild. Gordon McCrory will set Canada underway. Recently made the switch to fly half after winning the bulk of his caps as a number nine. Has showed some real class though in the warm up game from the fly half position. So McCrory goes deep into Kenya's half and the Simbas pull it out of their 22. Samson on Somu, the scrum half. First chance for him to get his back line moving and they look to shift it down the line first off. Sami Oliech has missed pass and that hasn't gone to plan. William Backer tidies up on the left wing. Not the first touch of the ball he would have wanted to have, William Backer. The seven start. He's really taken to 15s in recent months though and he's full behind Kenya's charge for a Rugby World Cup place. That's charged down. Nick Blevins is onto it for Canada. Kenya come back with it though. The pressure put on early by the Canucks. And this time, Oliech gets a better clearance. Still touched in flight, though. That hasn't bounced kindly for Theo Sauder at fullback. Here is Sauder, though. Lovely feet from the fullback. Just two caps to his name. Here is someone with rather more, Ray Barkwell. 38 years young, Ray Barkwell, in the two jersey for Canada. And the lines of running are accurate from the men in red. Mack to McCrory. Hooks that one over the top. Gathered back in, though, well by Lesage. I think he was surprised to have that in his hands. Here is Bailey, and that's a lovely offload, but knock on. And you've got to say, Kenya risking a lot in those opening exchanges, Rob. Absolutely. We mentioned about that lack of structure. Saw a case in point there. Oliets getting the ball as a 10 and just shoveling it on. No real understanding about how wide they're wanting to play. A little speculative kick, perhaps a little bit unlucky. A few people in front of the ball, perhaps. And as you mentioned, fortuitous there, Lachage gets the ball and then the offload was ready. Early tackle, correctly identified by Wayne Barnes. Awade most definitely tried to tackle the man before he caught the ball. Otherwise, we could well have been seeing Taylor Arden striding. Well, we knew that Kenya didn't have all that many preparations coming into this Repechage tournament, just the one warm-up game out against Romania A, where they lost in Bucharest. They haven't played a test in three months, and you have to say from that opening exchange, it does show. The upshot, Gordon McCrory with a shot on goal. And a successful one too. Canada get the first points and they go to their fly half, Gordon McCrory. It's a tough ask of any scrum half to play fly half. McCrory's really stepped into it. He's going to have the distribution skills often associated to a scrum half, but the kicking is a very different entity. We saw his little chip kick in midfield, but how you really probe the kicks long down the field against his Kenyans known again. If they do get it in broken play, we've already seen in the first stanza of this game just how unstructured they're going to be. And that's just going to continue throughout the whole game. And they do sometimes play a sevens version of 15s when it comes to 15 inside the game, Kenya. Can be devastating. Certainly entertaining. 
Oli Etch with a lovely hanging kick off, and that's a good tackle from Mbaka. The sevens link up there, working well. A completely understandable for Matt Evans there to be in slight bit of fear as William Bakker is running down the field toward him. Really is a spectacular player, just rugby player in general. He's well versed with 15s. People talk about William Bakker's sevens capabilities, but he's played on three continents in the 15s game, and that's what he's about. He's an absolute athlete, and he puts his shoulder in pretty well there. Well, the scrum is an area of the game where Canada are looking to put the squeeze on Kenya. How will their youthful front row fare here? They are under duress, that is for sure. Mack, Wayne Barnes says play on, and this could be an attack from deep from Canada. It's in the hands of Lesage. Sauda, for the first time we see DTH van der Merwe get his hands on the ball, but that isn't quite how he would have wanted that one to play out. No, and it's ended in an error there. But having just witnessed that scrum previously, it perhaps isn't a bad thing to be knocking the ball on in midfield because that was one of the most dominant scrums you're going to see, certainly in Test Rugby. Unfortunately, they're not able to keep his hands on the ball. was indeed a little bit of an error from Sauda there. But the scrum, what an annihilation. They got their wheels on, going backwards. And that, from the first signals of how strong this Canadian pack can be, could make for a very long day for the Kenyan front five. Yeah, it's a front five which has been put through the mincer by head coach Ian Snook since he took over in March. He even had them down to running laps of the pitch just to get them in running shape. It's the first real test of how that has gone over the last half year or so. This time Chinge, or Chisanga rather, gets the ball out the back, the number eight. He is a monster, Chisanga. Spent time with Newcastle Falcons and playing in Poland as well. On Somu. Now Oliet, who dummies and goes himself. Picking and going is the lock forward. Nyambua. Normally plays on the flank, Nyambua, but asked to do the engine room duties today. On Somu. And now this is Coleman Ware, who is a young man, just six caps to his name, but Explosive in the loose. On Somu with options. He's a real focal point for Kenya, the scrum half. He's had real consistency in that position in 2017 and 2018. And this is Kenya building nicely now, putting things together in the right order. Here's Were again. Oliech. Had to dither with that, but it does come out. Mukidza and now Chisanga, who's taking up position on the far right-hand side and using his frame to good effect. Canada really unable to stop in there, and penalty to the Simbas. And Wayne Barnes just taking time now to see what's happened. I think first instance there, it was a bit of a head injury, which clearly is a bit of a, an issue at the moment. Wayne Barnes just taking time to go and speak to Joy Neville. Well, with the matter of um, going to TMOs always on the mind um, of rugby fans, good to see Wayne Barnes and Joy Neville leaving up to themselves on the pitch. Oh, exactly that. And how good is it to hear Wayne Barnes converse? Slightly open-ended questions to Joy Neville. They're almost asking but telling at the same time. Clear the yellow. Any type of incident around the head, you're going to get punished for it. And the thing that the Canes are going to do will be very direct. And that's clearly one high shot, first and foremost from Van der Merwe. Pretty lucky to get away with that one because the left arm was most definitely around his face and followed up again with a little bit of a dump tackle, which was the concern there. As soon as a player is picked up in the air, you have to be very dangerous how they're getting put down. And there, beyond the horizontal, I mean, you could argue in that instance there, Jack, very lucky indeed to still be on the pitch. Um, Ten minutes off, albeit that could well have been a red. Yeah, Matt Heaton with the yellow card had a real breakthrough season in 2017. And he's got ten minutes to think about his actions. 
Well, three moments there of real indiscipline. And that's exactly what you need to be against Kenyan. You've got to be disciplined because they're going to play in a completely unconventional style. You've got to get used to it. Kids uh, from a difficult angle can't keep it straight. There is a wind coming across here. We are by the sea, only two kilometres uh, from the Mediterranean Sea, and it's, uh, it's feeling quite windy here. Darwin Makidza will, uh, will have felt that full force coming across him, but so the scores stay at 3 0 to Canada. McCrory goes long, and just as the sun comes out, it's taken well, though. Oliech. Now this is Mbaka, we're seeing him for the first time with ball in hand. Good defence, first up and then that was a solid 10 metre gain on Somu. To Owade in the centres and knocked on by Kenya, so Blevins brings it forward and Theo Sauder is kicking forward for himself. On Yango is having to make good ground to get back and Sauder is looking to pick it up himself. Have Canada turned over? They have. It's played and they've gone through. Well, Canada, smash and grab try. But they fully deserve that. Put, Can put Kenya under pressure. That's the first try of this Repichard tournament. Well, it would be DT van der van der to score. It's such a poacher, clinical finish from him as he ran so close to the breakdown to score it. But it was all about the error. Forward pass initially, which was given advantage for. You can see there, Amonde passing it forward. And as soon as the ball is turned over, put on the right foot from Sauda and off he goes. Bearing in mind how quick these Kenyans are. He gave a really good chase, put enough pressure on Opondo trying to get the ball but couldn't. And that turnover meant the ball was recycled. Phil Mack managing to dig it out and one pass. And look at the line that Van der Merwe takes there. DTH scores it, adds another one to his significant tally. Yeah, he now has 33 tries in 53 test appearances. That's not bad going, is it? And the points after is good as well. Canada racing to a 10-0 lead. Look at ominous on the turnover ball there, Jack. Really great play. And that tracking line is what made it so special. Van der Merwe knows exactly where he needs to be to hit that line to get his men on the scoreboard. So Olias gets us back underway. It was interesting listening to Kingsley Jones before when he was over in Coventry on their warm-up tour. I asked him if he was worried about William Backey. He said he's a good player but we've got DTH van der Merwe. Carl Bailey taking that one forward for the Canucks. Mack shapes the box. That's a high one. Coming forward is Chisanga. Works back inside well. Ilniki. And now this is Biden's. McCrory, Blevins, on his 30th birthday today. The inside centre. Taken well, though, and McCrory miss one. And this is Van der Merwe once more, showing the dummy and going himself, staying on his feet, DTH Van der Merwe. Kenya do get back. In the end, they get back. Another threatening run. This is Olmsted. Kenya stolen it on the floor, though. Mukidza was involved in that, and now it's come back on Canada's side. So play goes on, oh, fast and loose, this match here at the Stade de Lort. It's Lesage, it's Blevins. Canada again pushing, asking questions. Matt Evans on the right wing. Phil Mack, and this will be another score, and it'll go to Brett Bukaboom. 
his first international try. And that was an easy one. Perhaps expect to see a little bit more celebration from him there. But it was really that turn of a ball again from the initial error down this far side. DTH van der Merwe just showing just how good he is with the ball in hand. Not just one dummy. He gets a second little cheeky one out as well with the ball in one paw. And as soon as this ball is transferred the other way, it's just the retention of the ball. Sweeping round. Phil Mack really intelligent play here identifying as soon as William Backer makes that tackle, the 11 in the breakdown, there is no one on the blind side. And just as well... As Chenge, the captain, tries to shut it down, just too easy for the big second rower to slide in out wide. I think there was a little check there from Brett Bruker, and just to check there were no offside flags, no referee whistling. He wasn't quite sure it had happened, but it has. It was almost too easy, wasn't it? That's the thing. McCrory almost looking like a mini Bukaboom as well. They look very similar players, although I don't think Bukaboom would be that good at kicking these. McCrory wayward from that one. Well, it was uh, half a yard or so in from the touchline. So the first fault in Canada's steps so far. They've been off to a great start. Kenya now will have to respond. They can score points. They can score tries. It's, it's all possible for them. It's just against the structure of Canada. Can they do it consistently? This one is down the throat of Matt Evans and back at taking him low. Very decent kickoff from Oli Etch to pin Canada in their 22. Bailey doesn't make any yards but keeps the ball. McCrory puts the leather on it and a uh, bit off the side and we'll have a line out just five metres on from the 22. Yeah, it's a good enough strike, but not much distance there. You want to be trying to get that ball nearer the halfway line. Just meaning now, can you get the ball back? Still in Canada's third. And we've seen how much threat they've got. They just need a little bit more ball in hand, getting those direct runners in the game. And then they've got a chance to try and get some points on the board. Solid line out from Kenya. They look to set up them all. They've chosen to leave Oliver Mangeni on the bench for the start of this one. He's their line out supremo. But that one working well enough. They're getting it back on their side and making inroads too as they edge up to the 22. Onsomu has it. And he goes to his inside centre, Owade. Onsomu, only three players away to his right, but. He seeks them out. This is in Jira. And the line is from Tony Onyango up from fullback. Well, they had the penalty anyway, but only three on that side, Rob. So much space, it didn't work out. Yeah, it's one of those situations where the forwards either intentionally hold on the, on the blind side or are a little bit too tired to run round. It happens quite a lot. Coaches making notes on it. What you don't want to do with this Kenyan team is make it too structured. Just get them playing like a natural flow game they've got where it's high energy, it's very unpredictable, it's offloads, it's line breaks. When they go for these forward set piece plays, albeit this ball was really well set up, it just changes that tempo a little bit, can really sap the energy. And sometimes they just need to break it up a little bit without necessarily engaging too much in the hardened mauling. It is to Nyambua who they go again. Good line out throwing from Kamuwere so far, the hooker for Kenya. And they keep creeping forward. It doesn't look like the best body positions in the world, but they make ground. On Somu has it at his back. He's with Mbaka, it's round to Oliech, and this is Injera. On Yango here has an opportunity to go himself, and Tony On Yango scores. Well, Kenya, it didn't take them long to hit back, and they've hit back in style. <laughs> Well, I'm rightly applauded because that is a real recognition of how much improvement has gone into this Kenyan team. The mall, whilst not the most effective in terms of body positions, sucked in all the players and this is all you want. You get a three on three with 50 metres of space on the outside and this is what the Kenyan outside backs are capable of. Ayango, the man 
who scores it. And Jira with a lovely left-hand pass to free him up. That is exactly the template that this Kenyan team need to just keep replicating, keep the forwards tight and then get the backs to do their business out wide. Onyango, his ninth try in all test matches. Of course, Canada are a man down at the moment. Well, very lucky the fact he might well be coming on the pitch as well. I have to mention that. Better effort from Mukidza, but still not close enough. So 15-5, the scores stay at. And here's Njira just feeding the ball wide. Be on no little bit of a dummy. Gets on the outside of DTH van der Merwe. And that close to a try line, all too easy. So Wayne Barnes, really interesting there, just picked up on the referee, Mike. He thought there were two people involved with the tip tackle, which is why it wasn't further penalised. Very lucky in that instance because Heaton were on his own with it, it would, would, would have been a red card. Well, Heaton will be rejoining the fray shortly. Indeed, I think he already has. And that one overcooked. Scrum back on halfway. I thought we might well see one of the secret laws of rugby there. If they did indeed run the ball back toward the halfway line, they could have taken a quick line out. Sometimes that's an option. The ball going dead now gives a split field scrum and this is exciting proposition. The only caveat being to this back play is that they've got to win the scrum in the first instance. Yeah, so much experience in Canada's scrum. The combined age of Canada's front row at the moment, 100 years old. Fantastic. Hubert Biden's Ray Barkwell and Jake Nicky may not thank us for, for mentioning that, but just shows the level of experience they have. On Somu, goes blind. It's a solid scrum from Kenya, and the ball comes back inside to Injira, who cuts a lovely line. And he has the ball on the outside as well. And that's where it goes awry, because that was building so nicely from Kenya. Well, Injira had every single right to put his hands in the air. What a set-piece play. You see the man on the inside tracking it. Injira gets the ball. Hits the wonderful arrow line. And have a look at this. There's absolutely no one in front of Oliech. All he had to do was keep going. He'd have got in the corner. Instead, speculated, threw it right into touch. Thought the linesman down there, Joy Neville, was going to try and catch it. An opportunity well and truly wasted. Canada with the exit. And that's well played from Brett Bukaboon. Back to doing what he does well. Winning lineouts. Can you really... Bearing their teeth, though, in attack. That was wonderful play, and I'm sure we'll see more of it in this game. Armande, former Sevens captain at number six. Plenty of options for him, so he goes blind. Were to Nyambua. Nyambua getting through a lot of work. The Big number four. And this is the first time we're seeing Patrick Ouko, another one of the young players in Kenya's front row. Chisanga as well. Doesn't he come onto it at a pace, the number eight? Somugen and Were, who is starting to like popping up at fly half, the hooker. And that's the captain, Davis Chenge, being sent backwards. I would have enjoyed that one. Penalty to the Simbas. It was impressive defence from the Canadian team. Speaking to Henry Paul before the game, Kingsley Jones brought him in as defence consultant to look at a few systems in place. Not known for his defensive capabilities as a player, but as a coach, he's got them working on these individual techniques. Bit of a cheap shot there. You can see you don't want to be seeing that. And Nicky put in the shoulder and as soon as the ball was passed, right in the kidneys. But Henry Paul's got them working. Well, not over committing. It's very difficult against the Kenyan team to keep that line to know they're going to come at you and come at you all day because these Kenyans will not tire. You don't need to put in the cheap shots if you've got your defensive line set. 
on Somu, just one of the, well, the one half of the half-back pairing, both from Impala Saracens, Sami Oliech being the other. And there is Oliech. Such a talented sevens player, such a talented 15s player as well. Ian Snook reckons that he could play provincial rugby in New Zealand without too much problems. He's got a real awareness of space. I guess you get that having played a bit of sevens. You've got that understanding of how to manipulate defenders. You've got attacking ability, you've got pace, and certainly he's got some big men on his outside as well, which always helps the matter. But again, it's about that set piece. Can you need him to secure the ball to have this platform? to let the rest happen outside it. Tried the little cheeky one at the front. Often underused. Needs to be thrown straight. So Canada with the scrum as we go past the 20 minute mark in this match. Started at quite a pace and has continued through well. It's a compelling one to watch so far here at the Stade de Lort. The first repechage game of this tournament. Played over the next three weekends, all in Marseille. Round robin format and either side who wins this. They know that only 33% of the job is done. They have to win all three and they'll definitely qualify for the first World Cup in Asia in Japan 2019. We may, our maths, Rob, it's not perhaps what it should be, but we reckon you can still get through with two wins, depending how the others fall, so. Will be an interesting one to see. Canada, for them, it is a lifeline for themselves and their union to qualify for the Rugby World Cup. That's what's at stake for them. Canada. Kenya, rather. Trying to qualify for their first ever World Cup and got lots of ball at the moment. Canada happy to let them run at them and just take the tackles. And Chenge loses the ball. Evan Olmsted rips it clear. Playing in the second row today, Evan Olmsted and doing what he does so well as a blindside flanker. He couldn't look more Canadian, could he? Look at Evan Olmsted, ex Newcastle Falcon. Now playing a bit in New Zealand as well. But this is what he's about. He's done it time and time again. Really good in the breakdown. Gets over the ball. Might be wearing five on his back. But that's, that's the skills of a seven. As soon as the defender's thrown down, can't quite keep hold of the ball, unfortunately. But he's a very industrious player, Olmstead. So Kenyan ball. Another set piece with a wide arcing space over to the right and Sami Oliech and co may be licking their lips if they can get the ball back here. It goes down but referee Wayne Barnes says play on on Somu. Oliech this time they go via the toe. Sauder comes forward and it bounced well for him. Keeps it alive. Mack, the captain. Former seven star himself, Phil Mack. Now focusing on the 15 aside game, and he's made the number nine jersey his own in the last couple of years as Phil Mack, a real leader in this team. And here's another one, Tyler Ardron. Plays his club rugby over in New Zealand for the Chiefs. And there's Bukaboom with the good hands to his second row colleague, Olmsted. McCrory, round the back, Sauder once more. This is Evans. First test in two years. Matt Evans on the right wing for Canada. Ray Barkwell held up. It looks like by... Well, a couple of infringements, so we'll go back for the penalty. But uh, Canada looking good when they go through the phases, Rob. But Kenya's defence up to the task. Yeah, I think that's positive on both outcomes there. You're looking at a Kenya team who are making their hits, putting their shoulders in, really stopping Canada on that gain line and seemingly Canada just keeping the ball, shifting it well. I think... They are going to ride this game out. They know they're not as athletic 
as these Kenyans. You're not going to win that one-on-one -on -one battle, but what you can do is get a couple of your mates with you, get the opportunities through carries such as this, without them really taking his team forward, and then use a little bit more tactical play. So those probing kicks downfield, really try and grind down this Kenyan team. Barkwell goes to the back. Taken well, and Canada set up them all. Kenya resistance fading as Barkwell has it tucked under his arm. The hooker with over 50 caps for Canada. Fair few tries in there. I don't think he's going to go in from here, but they are making inroads, and Mac decides he wants it. McCrory has a little look himself. Olyech was shutting him down. Have numbers away to the left to Canada. Heaton. Now this is Lesage, and Lesage has an outside break. Canada keep the ball. Mac goes left. He has space himself, does Phil Mack. Rolling just short. But DTH van der Merwe will finish the job. Second try for van der Merwe. And it just came from a lovely outside break from Ben Lesage. And patient, considered play. Phil Mack orchestrating things once it had gone to ground. It's fantastic multi-phase play by Canada. Almost seems sanctuary every time they create the breakdown. The Kenyans are not quite sure what to do defensively. And then it means they get a chance. Have a look at that free ride in the middle. Asando having a little bit of fun on the mall, and why not? And then lovely little ball. Outside break, Lesage sets it up, and then as soon as this breakdown happens, you can see five Kenyan players in shot. All too easy for Phil Mack. Ball in two hand, Dummies in Jira. And then, would you believe it, the man who seems to have a magnet in his hands whenever he is near a try line, DTH van der Merwe, holds his width on the left and scores. Well, with his two tries in the first half hour, DTH van der Merwe may be setting himself up for his first ever hat trick. He's not scored one in Canada Colours, would you believe? One of the few things that's eluded him in the try scoring stakes for his country. McCrory's kick just glances away to the right. So 20 points to five, Canada now leading. They're playing very good rugby indeed. That just makes Van der Merwe's try scoring record all the more remarkable. Not one hat trick. I think this could well be a game he does indeed get that. If indeed perhaps a couple of hat tricks if this game pans out as it started for the Canadians. And right to celebrate. Well, they've got to say that the wind has picked up quite significantly now and that might well interfere with the tactical kicking. It's Kingsley Jones looking on pretty happy, I imagine. Ollie Etch's kickoff is a good one again. That side of things has worked sweetly for Kenya so far. That time even better. And Baka taking it. And Omonde. On Somu. Ollie Etch and Owade. I think he lost that in contact. But gained it back. Uh, or never lost it indeed. Were and Oko, the front row, linking up well. Omonde once more has Mbaka with him. Works the offload to Mbaka. Kenya once again, wasting no time in trying to get back at Canada. With the advantage as well. Chisanga is lurking and picks and go himself the big number eight. This time Oli Etch puts in the dab. Blevins is blocking Canada. Are unable to stop Kenya striking back immediately once more. Lovely try created by number 10, Sami Oliech. Lovely little chip through. Kenya's second try in this game. That is what they can do. And it's great vision. Comes from the restart and Backer showing his seven skill set as he attacks the restart and then Oliech. Little dummy, sees there's no one in behind. The fullback committed. And as Awade is inside centre, who just held that line, got through the defenders and managed to put the ball down. Great play from 10 and 12 in tandem. And just because he can, he throws a little cheeky drop kick. 
But that is a lovely kick. Olmsted in front of him, because he's shaped so square, couldn't get the foot down in time. And just shows this Kenyan team can indeed score when given that chance. It will be interesting to see how Canada respond because plenty of times in their playoff matches against the USA and Uruguay, they would go 15 points up or get their noses in front and then they'd let their opposition come back in. And so far, that is what Kenya have exposed and they've won that one back themselves. Carried forward again. Malcolm Onsondo, the big number five. Were again. He's been everywhere in this first half hour for Kenya. Full of good things for the Simbas. So to Oliech. And that one, though, just drifting forward. Yeah, given no choice there by the big runners on the outside of Oliech. But again, it's this kicking in behind and as soon as the ball's reclaimed Injira this time showing his nous in the air gets that ball free this is what Kenya really seek and here's the end result Oli X just running lateral and Monday hits a big hard line with Chengi on his outside but it did drift forward Despite Canada's advantage on the scoreboard, they are trailing in the possession stakes. Kenya with 58% of the ball so far. And territory, 74% Kenya. Canada have been clinical though, and Mack looks to set up another attack. This is Blevins. Part of the plus, plus 50 caps brigade in Canada's ranks is Nick Blevins. And Olmsted gets hit hard by Chisanga. That's not a place you want to be too often in a match. And Mack asks forwards for protection for the box. Onyango is under this, taking it out of the afternoon sun here in Marseille. We'll come back for the penalty, offside from Kenya. Oh, Wayne Barnes there, very clear in his direction to the players. They do indeed have to pick the ball up rather than just have his hands on it. Many people who did witness the All Blacks versus England game might well have a comment on that as well. But it's one of those in the law book and you're not going to get anybody better at getting that law across than Wayne Barnes. Very decent nudge indeed, Canada. Well into Kenya's 22. Gordon McCrory's kicking. They came here to practice for the captain's run. There was no formal team run here at the Stade de Lort to keep the pitch fresh for today, but the kickers came along and McCrory was looking good then, translating that into form today. Barkwell finds Bailey. Hard to miss is uh, Carl Bailey with the long locks. Sets up this mall and Canada's body shapes are low. Phil Mack, though, asks the backs to have a go and, well, crashes into, I think it was Blevins. That was almost too many options and uh, not the right one chosen because there was so many crowding the vision. Well, he's not happy with it, Phil Mack, but there's absolutely no doubt about it. You could see the gap open up. You can see where he's going to go. The Canadian fans on looking. Almost feel like it could well be a bit of a basketball score, this one, but Phil Mack off the base of them all. Just runs that lateral line. He's right to try and pick the gap, but because that short, hard line came in so clearly from Heaton, he had to blow it up. Canada take the line out off Kenya. Mack and Ardron. Powerful runner when he gets ahead of steam up is Tyler Ardron. Blevins. Provides the crash in that midfield for Canada so often. And has Lesage outside him who has those refined qualities of picking the gap and gliding through them. Saw it earlier for one of DTH van der Merwe's tries, that third try. On Yango slips. Canada's chases 
weren't able to take advantage of it. And he will find touch around about halfway. Well, the sensible style of rugby coming in at the end of the half, Rob. Five tries and all we've seen. And here just uh, on Sango doing the right thing. Kicking for safety. And it really adds to their territorial battle at the moment. They're winning. 70% of territory is going to the Kenyans. 52% possession means they've got the lion's share. I think almost they're playing a little bit too much. It's that in-between phase play where they're not particularly going anywhere. It's not broken. The Canadians are structured and set. And with that, they don't necessarily need to. They can just kick it along. They've got good kickers amongst their ranks and just try and break up the battle a little bit. Interesting to see if the second half has a similar feel to it. Perfect line-up form from Canada. Blevins into the midfield. Bukaboom scored his first try in international rugby in this half. Little show and go there. His tail must be up. Lesage loses the ball. So Kenya with a broken defence to run at here. Chenge fires the ball out wide. Nyambua, who it was who took it in. Oli Etch with the quick hands to Chisanga, the right man to get you out of a spot of bother. Taken forward again, the forwards going through a lot of work. Malcolm on Sondo this time. Plays his club rugby for Kenya Harlequins. That was Odero. Chisanga again. Real highlight for Kenya in this first half has been the form of that man. DTH Van der Merwe, though, spies another opportunity and collects it, puts it back to Bukaboom. Canada, perhaps, with a chance to end the half with their bonus point try if they can get it. Lesage. This is Sauda. Sauda puts in the fend and he will round off a very good half indeed for Canada. They played the counter, they absorbed Kenya and then they struck. Wonderful try from Theo Sauda. And it's on the back once more of a Kenyan error. Said about how much they're playing with ball in hand when they don't need to. There the ball spilled by the big man Nyumba and then the ball hacked on by Van der Merwe, shifted right. As we've seen a few times, Phil Matt being the pivotal player and getting that bit of width in. And it's nice hold up play on the inside by Vlasage, who brought enough time and space for Sauda to get on the outside of Amonde, gets the fend out and he gets the finish. He does come with a high billing, Theo Sauda. Everyone's, the voices around the Canadian camp always speaking well of him as a ball player able to attack from anywhere and the full skill set. That was a very balanced way to finish that one off. That's exactly the word I was going to use. He's so balanced when he's got the ball, almost Mackenzie-esque, where he knows he can beat people, stay square, look for the offload, perhaps use his distribution as well. It's a really great quality to have as a fullback. McCrory takes things to 27 points to 12. Canada well up and running in this first match of the Repechage tournament as they pit for their spot at the Rugby World Cup 2019. Still a lot of work to do, but their first half has been done well. They lead Kenya 27 points to 12, and they have their four try bonus point in the bank already.
Good. Paddy Jova. Just a knock on. Yeah, 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 where you are. Party Jova! And roll away, everyone away. Yes. Ball's available. Hold. Our sidelines look pretty good. Anything around there?
for Kenya and Canada about out on the pitch ready for this second half here in Marseille. Canada leading 27 points to 12. Four tries wrapped up in that first half. Kenya scoring two themselves. Canada also having Matt Heaton in the Simbin for 10 minutes. But all in all, Rob Vickerman, it was an impressive half from the Canucks. But Kenya by no means in any way out of this at all, given the way Kenya, Canada have conceded leads as well in the recent past. Well, I've just had a little quick chat with Gareth Rees, Hall of Famer, probably the most notable Canadian player in history, and he's a little bit nervous still. Many times the Canadians go in at half-time, up, and then suddenly things happen, scores come on the board quickly from their opponents, and then they're back in it. So they're not the most confident at half-time, but certainly are in a good position. They've not had the ball much, in the Kenyan 22, but when they have, they've been clinical, lethal, even. So there's a lot to look forward to from the Canadian team. Seemingly, Kenya have to just keep trying to chip away, get their opportunities converted, and for me, not look for structure, keep breaking things up. The voice of Rob Vickerman, former England sevens player and English Premiership centre for Leeds and Newcastle, alongside me for this one. We are back underway. Referee Wayne Barnes is in the middle still. Late out from half time again, the referees have been uh, keeping the players waiting today. McCrory hits this one straight down the middle, and Oliech is back to gather. Sets off himself to Sammy Oliech. So Wary will play fly half and certainly likes that position in the first half, Common Wary. He had Chisanga with him. Now this is Kenya up and running very quickly. William Backer on the left-hand wing. On Somu has to wait for his forwards to realign. This now is Odero. The tackles come in low, but can you keep it alive? And this is lovely from the Simbas on the left-hand wing. Right up to the line. Can they place it there? Just, just held up. Well, they went through the back door to get to within a blade of grass's distance, I think, Rob Vickerman, to try and score that one. Oh, so close. I was glancing there at the screen, as viewers probably were as well, certainly in Kenya because it looked like one little bit of reach there and the ball was down, but what incredible defence. McCrory takes the initial hit, manages to somehow speed bump, but it's Phil Mack getting his hands just underneath the ball. I mean, that is remarkable stuff right on the try line because that was about a centimetre away from being a try for the Kenyans. Yeah, captain stuff, that from Phil Mack at 33 years old. George Nainbu it was with the charge. Kenya with the scrum now, five metres from the line. Interesting start to this second half. Ian Snook and Murray Ralston look on the Kenyan coaching staff. Only installed in March. It's only the second time Ian Snook is taking charge of an international side. First time was for Laos, not known as a rugby hotbed, but Snook went from there and now in charge at Kenya, trying to get the Simbas to their first World Cup. And if he does, the contract will stay. So many of these sides in that situation, they Kenya take it quickly. Awade again. On Somu, and this is a Monday. And Canada scrambling well, just they had to. Stays with the forwards. Chisanga is looking for it on Somu. Kenya can sense their third try here. Canada really caught cold at the start of this second half. Driving forward and Kenya get there. It wasn't the flashbacks this time. It was the power of the forwards. And that is a superb finish. Well, you can't not mention power. Just look at the size of it on the screen. George Nainbu with the scorer. Or well, the man that went so close on the left-hand side, first and foremost, to get them down here, just built like an absolute rhino. 
And Monday hit a nice hard line through the middle. Couldn't quite get there, but the supporting player, certainly with the bulk of Odera on his back as well. Pushing Nyumba over the line. And that's why Gareth Reese was nervous. Conversion after from Darwin Makidza. No problems with that one. 27-19 now the scores. And there will be butterflies in the Canadian camp. Nyambua reveling as a lock. Still managing to find the wide outside and charge down wings and pick and go. Kingsley Jones on the left, head coach for Canada. Makidza carries forward the right winger. The high ball goes up. Interesting option from Sami Oliec. Van der Merver is under it. And Davis Chenge held long and hard onto the legs of DTH Van der Merver there. On two tries today, the Canadian speedster. Canada now, and Kenya's defensive line, well, didn't just look ramshackle, it looked non-existent for a while there, but they had the penalty. Uh, it's Collins and Giro with a turnover, and that's exactly what they need to do, break the game up a bit. Oli Etch put the ball incredibly high in a swirling wind. Wasn't particularly an aggressive chase from the Kenyans, but it's just a way of mixing up the game. It's exactly what they've got to do. The Canadians looking a bit rattled, and that's the initial chop tackle. And Jira over the top of the ball, gets the turnover, and it pumps up the tyres even more so for this Kenyan team. Well, first change of the afternoon made by Canada. Matthew Tierney is on at prop. And Lucas Rumble is on in the back row. Lucas Rumble, unlucky perhaps not to be in the starting lineup. He's had some very fine displays in a Canadian shirt, but now his first task will be to defend. Kenya on the attack, but they'll come back for the penalty. Well, Oli Edge got the memo. He's trying to do things differently. That ball identified as trying to hit William Backer out wide on the left. He was holding wide, but not quite able to take advantage. And that's what you've got to do. You get an advantage in rugby. You can do what you want. Teams need to be more experimental with that. And why not try and mix it up? Well, throughout Kenya's preparations for this repechage tournament, they were doing it all without a regular training pitch. The Federation don't have access to one they own, so they had to share it with a local club. The British Army also helped out in their base in Nanyuki, and Kenya went there for several, no doubt, very hard fitness sessions. But the line-out is there. Canada, collectively, able to relieve the pressure. Mack doesn't have the guards for his box, so McCrory is the option. And that's a very, very good kick indeed. Darwin McQuidza, had he caught that inside the field of play, he would have been off and racing and causing more problems. So Kieran Hearn now coming on. Very experienced player and perhaps a very wise choice indeed at a point like this, Rob Vickham. 60 caps to his name. Yeah, he'll know exactly what's ahead of him. And for a tough shift in the, in the centre opposite, Collins and Jira battle they've had many times before on a sevens field. Here is a Monday, the man who captained Kenya to their first sevens series victory in Singapore two years ago. Experienced man as well. This is Mbaka. Such a talent. So difficult to stop. And here's another difficult man to stop, Oyuko. And Kenya really with their tails up on Sondo. Each player inspiring the next one onwards. Owade, who has a try to his name. And Chisanga, lucky to get away with that one. Could have been blocking, but not on the second attempt. Canada getting their mitts on the ball. That man, Evan Olmsted. 
Yeah, he's absolutely class over the top of the ball, Olmstead. You can see as soon as he identifies he wants to be on that ball, he's so difficult to move. Even with his big long back, he manages to get his body in a position whereby he cannot be moved. And that's a big turnover. To mention how little ball Canada have had in this second half. It's moments like that from Olsted that get a bit of belief in the team and ultimately get them a bit of ball as well. Well, Kenya now follow suit with their replacements. Oliver Mangeni is on and Martin Awila as well in the back row. Mangeni in the scrum hat. So good in the line out, almost interfering there. Barkwell, though, has it at the back. Only picked up the game at 17 years old, did Ray Barkwell. And his debut at 32, and here he is shooting for the World Cup with Canada. That is Hearn. His first touch of the ball is a good one. McCrory out to the right. Lasage has Sauda, and Sauda cuts back in field, looking for space and finding it. Mack, the ball is knocked on. McCrory, that's a wonderful one on pass. How about that for purchase and angle? It's the hours of the scrum off drills shining through there, McCrory. Wearing 10, well adept at nine. It is interesting, perhaps um, Kingsley Jones has found that right mix that Phil Mack and Gordon McCrory used to compete for the number nine jersey. At the World Cup, it was the last World Cup, it was McCrory who had the shirt. We just see here the balance again of Theo Sauda. Wonderful to watch. But if you've got two good number nines, why not make one into a number 10? That's what Kingsley Jones has done. And McCrory is looking very much at home in the Test Arena in the 10 jersey. As we see a familiar face for Canadian fans, Jamie Cudmore. <laughs> great mo, great mo. It's indeed a wonderful mo. Four World Cups could more. He'll be championing that this Canadian team can get that next step. Ardron runs over Martin Awila. He would have felt that. Kieran Hearn stepping through and taking Kenya on up front. The waves come through. This is Bailey. He has long limbs, Carl Bailey, unable to reach out there, but Ardron might just do it. He will. Easy step inside for the big man. And Canada get another try. Fifth this afternoon goes the way of their number eight. And what a player Ardron is. You don't get to earn your stripes playing Super Rugby in New Zealand unless you're quality. But Phil Mack dictating the pace. Big forwards running hard. First off it was Bailey. And then just hanging that little outside line. He knows where he's going to run, but it's a nice left foot step as well to get on the outside of Mukidza. And as soon as that step happens, he's just falling over the line. It's like a heavy goods vehicle changing lanes. It's obvious to see, but you can't stop it when it happens. And McCrory is good from the tee. Canada lead, 34 points to 19. And just as Kenya had their tails up, they have to go back together and regroup, try and work out how to unpick Canada once more. But that is the way it's going. It's quite tit for tat. Every try matched by another try or a foray forward. It's been an exciting game here. Very well taken indeed by the try scorer Ardron. Max box kick is meaning Osango comes forward. This is Mukidza, Darwin Mukidza. We see more of him kicking for goal, but there he shows he can dance lightly on his feet as well. Martin Awila.
Samson and Somu doesn't need a second go at it. Kenya still deep in their own half and perhaps now Canada will be a little bit tighter in defence and not let the Simbas through so easily. Coming forward once more, Coleman Ware. He hasn't stopped the hooker. And out of options, Sami Oliech goes to the skies. Not much of a chase on by Ken yet, so Theo Sauder brings it forward, but he's seen some space in behind on Yango. Just a one-man chase, so Ken, yeah, but it's a very, very good chase from Theo Sauder indeed. On well, that gain for Canada there, a couple of ropey-looking kicks. And Wayne Barnes really was barking instructions for Adero not to chase, which meant that there was so much time for Canada to just pick the space in behind. Kicking often found to be two different types. You kick to compete or you kick for territory. Get the ball down there. They've got the ball back just 25 metres away now. Ardron at the back and then the peel. Mack heads off into centre field. McCrory, it's DTH van der Merwe who takes it off and gets the offload too. This is Lesage. Simba's scrambling well, but Kenya on the front foot once more and scoring once more. And it is that Sauder who gets the try. His second of this game. And the Canucks are looking very, very handy. Well, credit to score for Sauder, showing his balance. And this is a training ground move. Keep an eye on this from the breakdown. Phil Mack hits it wide, lovely inside ball. Van der Merwe gets the in road. That line breaks, then creates the space out wide. As soon as the outside backs from Kenya are committed, it's just a walk-in out the back from Van der Merwe. Lesage in support and holding width in the far Connell. That two-second rug, all important. Sauder able to slide in out wide. That is absolutely the way to calm any nerves in the Canadian camp. Two quick fire tries. And McCrory to take them beyond 40. But he can't quite manage it, so 39-19 the scores stay at. Lovely inside ball. Van der Merwe out the back. That's what it's about. We know he's not quite got that hat-trick in his Canadian career thus far. He gave up that chance to create one out wide for Sauder, who's now sat on a brace as well. And just his third cap today, Theo Sauder at Test Rugby. Made his debut in Scotland over the summer. He's also played in the Canadian A Games in October, though, so has a few more experiences wearing the red jersey. He's having a very good game this afternoon. Another man who's really coming into this game is Carl Bailey, taking the short ball there. Evan Olmsted making easy yards. Oliech is back and watching this one closely. Puts in the step, does Sammy Oliech. He's watched well, Lucas Rumble. Bit of space here on the right-hand side. Olmsted shuts it down, tries to latch on the long-haired number five. New man on at scrum half is Mohamed Amolo. And Amolo back to Oliech. And the kids are there. Now in back the two wings on the same side. Linking up well. Mangeni. Owade, whose try in the first half now seems like a long time ago. Felt like Kenya were really putting the squeeze on Canada at that point. But Canada have shown their class in the first 17 minutes of this half. And just using that halfway line now as the measure, Canada not committing any players in the breakdown. They have not 
been breached at all in their own half in those last five or six phases. Really good defence, and it's ended with a penalty. That is Lesage. One of the few highlights for Canada in their two-leg playoff loss to Uruguay. The Kenyan captain, Davis Chenge. Did say at the top of the programme, though, how it's not necessarily all over for Kenya if Canada come out on top of this one. It will depend on other results, of course, and Canada being the favourites. It's the perfect possible start for them. Ardron at the back. Hearn takes it off the top and makes a few yards. This is Bukaboom. Puts his head down. The Canadian rev waves lining up left and right, but penalty given. And Kenya take it quickly. Owila. Oliech. Powerful run carried on by Omonde. Omolo. Nyambua, who scored that try at the start of this half. Oliech again. Amolo bringing a bit of pace to Kenya's game since he's come on. But the ball turning over. Theo Sauda dangling that one in and Evans was chasing. And Canada are turning it over. Mack has options here and does a nice wraparound pass. So the game really breaking up here at the Stade de Lort as Canada with their 20-point cushion. Happy to play a little bit more expansive style. And here it comes again, Sauda. Picking up his DTH van der Merwe. He's not had time on the ball at all, but he's still called two tries this game. Mack. The ball is quick enough and McCrory goes back inside. This is Evans. Kenya doing well to track him. Olmsted brings it forward. Phase play, very impressive from Canada here. And they're within striking distance of another try. Bailey is, has the ball at his feet. Bukaboom and the rest of the forwards join in. Phil Mack happy to ask the fellows with the bigger size jerseys to go to work. Ardron on the rocket there. And what is Mack and his back line planning here? Olmsted still, it's with the forwards though. Matt goes himself and switches with Brett Bukaboom, who has a second international try. He woke up this morning with none, and now he has a double. It's almost that inevitable feel of it. Finally get a smile from him. Just scored a try for your country. You haven't had many. Now you've got two. Rightly celebrate it, although I imagine he's pretty tired from his graft he's put in. The Cornish pirate, Bukaboom, using his weight. And that's just really savvy play. Almost see the carriers being met with two of their own, winning those collisions, prowling each other over, and then Bukaboom just reaching out over the line. The damage had already been done. Outstanding play from the big forwards. And how patient have Canada been in that attack? I guess, Rob, that's the luxury of having a 20-point buffer. No one was snapping at the line to try and get their try. Kenya simply running out of numbers in the end. Yeah, last few minutes, Kenya really have shown a little bit of an experience. They're looking really tired across the board now. Very difficult to comprehend the Kenyan being tired on a rugby pitch, but this, the physicality that they're playing against the Canadians here has not been met before. They're absolutely in uncharted territories. McCrory is good from the tee, and Canada stretch their lead, 46 points to 19.
if you're joining us on World Rugby's channels for this one, we're delighted to have your company. Do stay with us for our next game on here in this repechage tournament. We have Germany against Hong Kong coming up. And Canada may be leaving one or two of their technical staff here to see what lies in wait for them in future games. This fixture, they're off to a great start. Connor Trainer is on for Ben Lachage, whose day is done and he's had a good day. The outside centre, penalty Canada. Just taking his time on the floor there. As soon as again we see an indication of a head injury, players have got to be assessed and understood. Everything's okay. Great take. Lovely little step. You're just catching one on the chin. Again, certain circumstances, very lucky to perhaps not get a red or yellow card for those instances. And that is the discretion the referees have been told about. Any head injuries starts with a red and works down. But Wayne Barnes obviously experienced with these decisions. Connor Trainer it was who took the knock from Davis Chenge. First action. Get that in your face. And Rob, what will the Canadian technical staff be thinking now with a good buffer and uh, will they be looking forward to other games or looking to run plays to practice? As we see Ray Barkwell just drive this Canadian mall, which has grown into this game. It, they were under and well watched in the first half, but they're looking very tidy indeed now and Barkwell still hitching a ride. Now they reform. Kenya having eventually slowed it down. I think it's Joshua Chisanga who has got in there as well as Olivia Oliver Mangeni. And they've stolen it. Wilson Capondo pulling that one away. Excellent work from Kenya's forwards in the end. Here is Injira. This is William Reeve who's just on for his debut. And Kenya... No backs to run another move, so they just clatter forward and, unfortunately, from their perspective, conceding possession back to Canada. Now just going back to the question you asked before about what will Canada do, it's about getting systems in place, getting that defence set. Clearly, they're coming to this with a tactic of not committing at the breakdown to keep that defensive line set, and everything else adds on. It's just a training ground routine now. The game is won. 46-19 is an absolute comfortable position to be in and it's now about making those fine tunings making those little things a little bit different try those combinations get the bench on perhaps maintain the health of the players who are more pivotal in the team and just play smart well the applause around the ground is for Coleman Ware who is coming off and certainly has played out of his skin for Kenya this afternoon. No matter where him. you are in the world, Jack, there is always incredible Kenyan support. It's remarkable. Mac feeds Canada scrum. Options either side. Ardrin picks and goes. Mac now to Van der Merwe. Sets off into the 22. Well watched, though, by Kenya. And that hat-trick try which Van der Merwe is looking for, just proving elusive. And he's still got 24, still got 14 minutes rather to play with, but sets off, but good Kenyan defence. Ikambili's throw, it ends up on his team side. Not sure that's exactly how he planned it out. And Monday tidies up. Oliech. Hot stepping for a moment. It looked like it may open up for the number 10. It would be great to see him running in open field. Such a talented player. Here is another DTH van der Merwe. Again, well watched. Justice Sears Duru. 
knocked back. But can you just over eager? Canada looking, McCrory still looking for options, still trying to see if he can pull a fast one on Kenya. That's the scrum half in him. I feel for Wayne Barnes, there have been two scrum halves for Canada. Scrum half notorious for always asking the referee questions and getting amongst it, but it's pretty clear there, right in front of Wayne Barnes, out the blocks very, very early. So, well, a couple of um, Brett, a couple of Evan Holmston lookalikes, rather, in the crowd. Very good to see the Canadian support, too. Ray Barkwell with the line. They may have something to cheer here. Arjun at the back, taken down. Rumble, who heads forward. Barkwell now back in his arms, and Canada shaping up nicely. Van der Merwe's in there as well. Barkwell peels off, squeezes his way forward, but just stop short and then at the second time of asking Canada placed it well a, a quarterback sneak that one Rob Vickerman well Matt Shepard getting it I don't know if DTH yeah. van der Merwe got the memo but if a back ever gets involved in a mall they're meant yeah. to be at the back you're meant to score them let the fours do the hard work as you can see here really good shift and then the second little push. I'm not quite sure how he stopped this because he's basically gone over the top of Barkwell. But certainly Shepard, give him that one, chalk it up, he gets to score. And next time DTH van der Merwe, to get your hat trick, if you are going to be in a mall, get to the back of it. Well, he may well have been being kind to Michael Shepard. It is his debut off the bench. It hasn't taken him long to be on the score sheet. Takes up Canada's 50. McCrory with plenty of kicking practice. He's getting through. No problems for McCrory. And statistics, they say, don't lie, but um, the 50% possession each between Canada and Kenya is interesting at the moment. They've each had an equal share of the ball. It's just Canada's efficiency with it at the moment that has pulled them away. And Captain Mack is off. I'm sure he'll be very pleased with his team's work this afternoon. Fifty-three nineteen. It is a dream start to this repechage tournament now for Canada. Sears Duru putting his arm to the wheel. McCrory round the back and that's a lovely break too. Hearn setting off and finding Evans and Evans is now going to race in. Reeve is chasing the lovely try from Canada's right wing Matt Evans. He missed the entirety of 2017 with an injury. That's quite a nice way to come back into things with your national side. And Kieran Hearn it puts on the burn, is so deceptive when he gets going. One little pump of the ball, but then throws the left-handed ball across. We've not able to stop it. And I feel for Evans. It is never an easy task being opposite William Backer, but he's marshaled that duty well, managed to keep him back a reasonably quiet, and now gets to show his pace out wide as he gets to score for his country. What an honour for him, especially after the year out. What resilience he's shown. Good score from Evans. He made his debut 10 weeks ago, 10 weeks ago, 10 years ago, rather, this week. Um, Matt Evans, been on the scene for a long time and been off it for a fair time too, but a nice welcome back for him. Toughest one of the lot in this half, but McCrory can't find the posts, and so 58-19, the scores stay. Well, Rob, if you're Kenya and 
what positives can you take out of this? Still two games to play and technically anything's still possible. The World Cup dream is by no means dead. They'd have taken so much from just playing together. This is a situation they've not been in before. Bringing back in sevens players, understanding positions and combinations. So many positives. They've scored when they've got the ball. They've had 50% possession. They've even got more territory than the Canadians. So things are going right. It's just about the errors. That's what's really cost them. And certainly that's something they can try and talk about. And if they can make enough adjustments in the space of the week, perhaps come into next week against Hong Kong with a little bit more confidence. McCrory back inside. Bailey, who keeps on going. The blindside flanker. Mackenzie and Barkwell, another one who hasn't stopped. McCrory and Sears Duru. Penalty Kenya. Oliech hasn't found touch. Sauda. Ball in two hands and causing all manner of problems still. On to Bailey. Starting to pick lines like an outside centre, Carl Bailey. Finding lots of space out there. Now here is Van der Merwe. What can he do from here? Puts it on the toe. Amolo is chasing back and he's fumbled it. Hacked through from Jamie McKenzie. And it hasn't fallen for either Van der Merwe or McKenzie there. Well, another threat, another edge of the moment seat as Van der Merwe tries to close in on his hat trick. Oh, what a ball that was from McCrory. See his scrum half skills as he whips that ball on the right hand over the top. Ian Snook and Murray Ralston. The game having gone away from their team in this second half. As you mentioned, Rob, plenty of positives. And worth bearing in mind, they haven't played a test match in three months. The Simbas. Canada, either in the form of their A team or as the full side, playing warm-up matches, have played seven. Canada really throwing the kitchen sink, the kitchen door and the kitchen itself at this repressage tournament. It is massively important to Canadian rugby that they keep up their record of appearing in every Rugby World Cup since its inception and trying to do better when they get there as well. Made the quarterfinals in 1991. This is Van der Merwe. Now picking the ball up at fly half. Back to Olmsted. Mackenzie now has a go himself. And Canada keep knocking on the door. This is Bailey. Every player looking like they're going to score. The drive comes on again. Barkwell now. Takes his time and... Has the support of Sears Duru. Can Bark will get there? He's only knocked back, has to claw forward. So Justice Sears Duru now doesn't make any better yardage. Eric Howard and Mackenzie now kind of having to realign. If they can get quick ball here, it could well be on. Van der Merwe is lurking out of. Our picture here, Mackenzie finds Van der Merwe, and he has got there. Finally, his hat-trick try, his first ever hat-trick in Canadian colours. Quite a moment for DCH Van der Merwe, a moment he's worked hard for, as well as his teammates trying to find him. And you'd think there would be more of a celebration. There he is, you can see number 11 on the screen, just looking for that straight line. He gets on the outside of the defence, and because he hits it so flat, there's not enough time to adjust. The defence looking into the breakdown. That's a great score. It's very similar to his first score, just a bit wider from the breakdown. Lovely pass, lovely take, spins and scores. Deserved hat-trick for DTH van der Merwe. And 
Sauda, no problems from the tee. So Kenya now gingerly coming back to halfway to kick off all that enthusiasm and the way they looked like they might be pushing Canada all the way in this one at the start of the second half really has fallen away. Cannon have been simply irresistible. They've done the basics so well. Sears Duru leaves Kenyan captain Chenge on the floor. That was a powerful run from the replacement prop. Here's Hearn. And here is Sauder. And here is Van der Merwe. He may get another. Goes himself. Will Reeve has done enough to stop him. Carried on by McKenzie. McCrory now. Canada, everyone trying to get in on the party. Penalty, though, to Kenya. Full credit to the way they scrambled there. And now they're going to just chance their arm. Here is Njera. Puts in the Fen, the seven star. Amolo. His pass hasn't found its recipient. And Will Reeve puts the kick in and behind. And Backer is chasing after this. Evans will only clear. But we will come back for a penalty to Kenya. Oh, and Barnes, I think, just uh, thanking one of the Kenyan delegation, one of the water carriers, uh, giving him a bit of advice on what his next call should be. Injera, wonderful individual attributes that he has. The number 13, what we've seen on the World Series of Sevens for so long. And there is our extra official today helping Wayne Barnes out. Ikambili's throw finds its target. Kenya, can they end this half the way they started it? Putting pressure on Canada. Ikambili at the back. And when Kenya have put their mind to it, their maul has been destructive. They have put Canada under pressure, which will be something Kingsley Jones will no doubt be working on as they march ever forward. Amolo. The head down is from Amusala. Penalty once more. Wayne Barnes not thinking of anything stronger. So the kick to touch is taken. Definitely have time for the line out, of course. With kicks to touch being allowed past the 80 minutes. From a penalty, of course. And Ikambili finds his man, and it's Martin Awila. Amonde now has his mitts on it. The ball goes to floor, and Canada tidy up. Lucas Rumble quick onto it. And now they have a chance here themselves. They may try and run it. They don't. Kieran Hearn boots it off the park. It's been a comprehensive victory. 65 points to 19 for Canada. And they have done it in some style as well. A hat-trick from DTH van der Merwe. A double from Brett Bukaboom. Another double from Theo Sauder. Matt Evans in on the score sheet. As well as Tyler Ardron too. And at the spearhead of it all was fly half Gordon McCrory. A number 10 having a superb game. And for the Simbas, Davis Chenge in the seven shirt. Cuts a solemn figure, really. High fives all round for the Canadians. And all that waiting, all that preparing for this Repechage tournament, they can breathe a little deeper now. They've got the first one under their belt. Two more games to come in this Repechage tournament. So now we're going to go down, I think, to Rob, who is with Captain Phil Mack. Captain Phil Mack, first time in 10 years you've got more than 50 points on the opponents. Must be a pretty happy camp right now. Yeah, I know. It feels great. Um, you know, it feels great to get the win. We know we, we know we need two more. So, um, you know, for us, it's just the beginning. Um, we, you know, hats off to uh, Kenya. They really made us tackle. And 
Um, you know, they're super dangerous, so we're just happy the way we dealt with them in the first half particularly, and, um, you know, it's good to get a win. How difficult was it coming to this game, not knowing much about Kenya and the way that they play? Yeah, it was difficult. I, luckily for a few of us, we're pretty well versed with a lot of the sevens boys, so, um, you know, we knew they were going to be dangerous. We knew they were going to be very strong, um, and that's exactly what we saw. And next week, Germany, what are you going to go into that game with? Uh, well, we'll reflect on this game and, um, you know, see what we need to uh, fix and improve on. But we know it's going to be a different story. They have a big physical pack. So, um, you know, we're going to have to front up in that department. But um, for us right now, we'll enjoy this, have a look at the review and then have a look at Germany. Special mention, DTH van der Merwe, first time he's ever scored a hat trick. How about that? Oh, the guy's the man. He does so much for us, so much good. Um, having him back is uh, it's great for us. It gives the whole group confidence. So, um, you know, like I said, we got, you know, we're going to enjoy this win, but we've got two more big games ahead of us. Congratulations, go and enjoy your moment. A frustrating game for the Kenyan team there, really difficult to try and match that physicality. What are your thoughts after that game? Uh, Canada, Canada, a really good side. They really brought physicality at us. Uh, we try we try our best to match them, but they were a better side. Kudos to them. Always smiles on the face of Kenyans when they're talking about rugby, but without a game in three months, how difficult was it coming to this repercharge game against a strong Canadian team? Uh, it is difficult because we didn't get a chance to test our systems against the quality opposition, so we couldn't really get a test of how, how we are. But I think the boys performed really, really well. Uh, now we're just trying to just go, go back to the drawing board and work towards the remaining two games. And what positives will you take from today's game? They showed really good character. They never give up. They uh, uh, fought to the, to the very end. That's good stuff uh, for the boys. Any messages for people watching back home? Kenya rugby really growing strong. Anything you want to say to the people? Uh, just want to tell them uh, sorry for disappointing them uh, this first game. But we really, we're going back to the drawing board, going to work even harder and come back even harder for the next game probably. Uh, hopefully we'll get the win of the next game. Well, best of luck against Hong Kong next week. Outstanding effort. Congratulations, well done. The thoughts there of Davis Jenge, Kenya's captain, and of Phil Mack, the captain of Canada. Tsar Cameron are trained on Collins and Jera, telling his team how to channel that loss into success, perhaps in the future games coming up. Canada getting all the applause and the sounds of the brass band as well here in the Stade de Lort. A lot of travelling. Canadian support around me, and they really enjoyed that second half. And for Kenyan fans watching back in Kenya, and for those in the stadium as well, it's back to the drawing board for them slightly, but plenty of positives as Davis Chenge was outlining. And they certainly gave Canada a workout at times, certainly the midpoint of the first half and then the start of the second. And this is how the statistics played out. In the end, those missed tackles and handling errors in Kenya's corner. Perhaps the turnovers conceded as well, undoing them. But the possession and the territory round about equal. And Canada just taking their chances all the better. 65 points to 19. It ended in all. And plenty for Canadian fans to say they're here. Well, that concludes our coverage here of the first game of the Rugby World Cup Repechage Tournament. Do join us back if you're watching on World Rugby channels for our next game. It's on Hong Kong versus Germany at 4 p.m. local time. So do uh, check back in with us then. We very much look forward to your company for that. And if you've just been joining us for this game, well then, have a very good evening. Or if you're in Canada, have a very good morning.